Desi Costa is one of the top prospects in Wolfsburg Academy and is also a top Canadian prospect. Hi, I'm James. And I'm Matthew. Welcome to In Control. Today we have an exclusive interview with our boy Jesse Costa. A lot of Canadian fans want to know a lot about him, and he's a promising player who plays for the Wolfsburg Academy and the Canadian U-20s. And we know very little about him. We're about to hear directly from him, his journey from local Canadian soccer to European Academy football and the Canadian national team. But before we get into the interview, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. It helps the channel a lot and it helps the video reach more people. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to follow Jesse Cost on Instagram as well. His links along with our links will be down below. Uh, but let's hello. get into the interview. Hey guys, today we have another special guest, Jesse Costa, current Canadian youth international and Wolfsburg uh, player in Germany. Jesse, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, thank you for having me today and uh, I'm looking forward to the podcast. Thank you. James, you got this. Okay. First things first, you want to talk about your start in football. You know, what age did you start? What clubs did you play for? And then we can kind of get into how you got into Wolfsburg. Yeah, of course. So, uh, no, I started the game at an early age of five years old. I was playing for my, my local city club, uh, Brampton Blast. You know, at the time it was Brampton Blast. Now it's uh, yeah. Brampton uh, Soccer Club. So yeah. I was I was there for about maybe three, three years and a half. And then that's where yeah. I made my uh, entrance to Pro Stars Academy, where my older brother yeah. at the time was so... Uh, just, just from him being there, it made everything more easier for my parents mm -hmm. for us being at the same club. So, and ever since there, ever since then, I was at the club for maybe eight years at Pro Stars. You know, just got a close uh, connection with the coaches there, and you know, I had a lot of friends at the time as well as, mm -hmm. like I said before, my brother too. So it just made more sense. Did you ever play a team called Genesis? Uh, yes, yes, I did. Okay, yes, so I you did. played our team. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you play it. No, he probably no, beat the guys younger, from uh, the younger team. Yeah, the younger, the younger team. team. You beat him probably, yeah. no? Yeah, no, it was, I think it was like 6 2 or something. Oh, I, I think it was just before pandemic we played them, just before oh, okay, the yeah. whole pandemic thing started. Oh, yeah. Is that when they spelled the sack league? Uh, no, no. So, uh, Ontario soccer, they made like a league for the academies in the middle of the pandemic. It's, it was, yeah. I think it was called Ontario uh, Youth Academy or like, kind of similar to oisl like something like that so okay, yeah. similar for but an academy league like that mm -hmm. right yeah so how did the chance come to play for wolfsburg yeah so uh no so originally i as you guys may have heard or seen i uh, i was set out to sign with uh, sporting lisbon right okay. and uh you know i was on trial there uh like just before the pandemic and then mm -hmm. uh just they went into a huge lockdown in Portugal. So I had to come mm -hmm. back and uh, it kind of like uh, sh didn't shut the door there. But, you know, I, I got delayed a little bit the process. Mm -hmm. And um, while I was supposed to go back, uh, I was uh, invited to come to Germany. Right. And I had a lot of mm -hmm. interest from a lot of clubs there just from being within the national team for Portugal there. And uh, yeah. just being at sporting, it made his way around Europe uh, a lot, right? So a lot of agents yeah. started getting in contact with me and uh, the news was getting bigger, right? So um, yeah. just just from there, uh, Wolfsburg came in contact with me and within my first three days at the club, I was able to impress uh, my now trainer, mm -hmm. my, uh, mm -hmm. my trainer currently. And uh, he, he fell in love with me. So, uh, like, just from there, after the first three days, I, I, I made a lock decision for me and my family. And it, it mm -hmm. just, it's been going very good since then. So, you, you played with Portugal before you went to Wolfsburg? Yeah. So, before. How I was that? Play. How did that come up? Yeah. So, uh, my father, you know, he sent, uh, like, a little, I wouldn't say a highlight tape, but uh, mm -hmm. he, he emailed, um emailed someone in contact he had a, a friend or an agent there who's like good friends with one of the directors mm -hmm. for the our age group so the under 17 yeah. age group and uh, he was looking for like kids outside of uh, portugal right because mm -hmm. i think they wanted to approach a similar way of what canada is doing now with trying to take yeah. more european based guys and not just mm -hmm. only from the players from their country right mm -hmm. to see everyone in the player pool right so yeah. uh he, he found my uh, my uh, my tape uh, uh, appealing and uh, he's like, yeah, let's give it a go. You know, I went to uh, my first U under 15 camp with uh, Portugal and uh, just before my 15th birthday, I was there. And that was a camp with uh, 
kids all outside of Portugal and a few uh, oh, okay. like uh, local boys, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I was I was able to impress there. Like I was uh, mm -hmm. maybe the top top three player, one of the top three players at the camp. Mm -hmm. So I earned myself my my last recent call up to Portugal, which was last year, but also before my birthday. So yeah. it's a good, always a good timing before my birthday. Usually, yeah, God, yeah. God, God manages to send me some good luck around there, right? <laughs> yes. Was this was this before the pandemic? Yeah, uh, yeah. So the under 15 call up was uh, before the pandemic, right? So uh -huh. it was when I was in trial with sporting. And then my yeah. under 16 call up was uh, like yeah. just when the pandemic was cooling down a little bit. And mm -hmm. then and then when it got worse is when they kind yeah. of shut everything down again. Yeah. So um, I know a lot of young Canadian players want to know, how do you feel about the huge culture shift between like Canada and Germany? Yeah, well, for me, it's like the Germans, man, they're, they're mentality monsters. Like they're just crazy. Like, like they love football like we do here, but there it's just a different level. Like they eat, sleep and breathe football like every single day. And it's, it's crazy. Like from my first three, three, four weeks with Wolfsburg, I saw it and like, I was able to adapt to it because man, like I, I'm like any other young Canadian boy coming yeah. up, man. We love, we love this game. It's what we, it's what we yeah. train for every day. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I would just say the mentality part and also, you know, the speed of play, it's natural. It's a European football, mm -hmm. right? It's the, it's the speed of play. But other, yeah. other than that, not, not, not so much of a huge difference, but those two are, I would say where are the most parts. Mm -hmm. How's the food there? Oh, the, ah, it's okay. It's like, okay. I, I miss, I miss, I miss like eating here like a lot, like being home like the last week or so. It's, yeah. it's been yeah. good to like eat some of my mom's homemade food from here yeah. that I'm, I'm used to been eating my whole life, right? But yeah. uh, you know, it's okay. You know, the the academy has their own chefs there, so we eat inside okay. the academy. Lunch, mm -hmm. lunch, breakfast, and dinner. And then, you know, on the occasionally, uh, maybe after a win, we'll go celebrate the win at like a pasta or Italian restaurant, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you move with your parents? Or did you go by yourself? So when I when I moved, my father was with me during the contract negotiations as well as my okay. agent. And then uh, I'm actually staying in a residency in the academy, mm -hmm. right on right on the campus of the academy. So okay. I'm there. I'm there by myself. Okay. And how does school work over there? Like, is there an, a school at the academy, or is it like somewhere close to it? Yeah. So no, they have. They're. They're. We're. We're attending a public school right beside the academy. So I would say one to two minute walk from the academy's uh, mm -hmm. dorm, and uh, we go directly, directly to the school. Like we start maybe seven fifty five in the morning, and then we're mm -hmm. there from twelve, maybe eleven fifty, depending, depending on the classes and when, when they finish. But yeah. and then we go directly to training uh, in the afternoon. All right. So so um at wolfsburg i know it's a little hard to get a lot of information because it's a youth uh level and it's like super far away from canada but what position have you been playing in currently and what roles do you prefer to play yeah so no uh with the under 17s where i've been uh, playing in the beginning of the season a lot i was used as 10 right which is my natural my naturally my uh preferred position you know because yeah. like in 10, I feel like I'm able to do a lot for the team because I, outside the box, I feel like I'm very dangerous for like op yeah. op oppositions and uh, I'm able to create a lot in that position. But my my team, my coach, he's been using me in the under 19s as well as a, as a winger, as a 10 and also right beside the six. So I can play the double six yeah. anywhere in the midfield, really. He's been That's versatile out here. Versatile. So, yeah, just from a young age, like my, my father... He coached me a lot when I was younger and he always mm -hmm. told me it's it's important to play a lot of positions and mm -hmm. he was he ended up being right at the end of yeah. the day yeah. because uh, yeah. it helped it helped me a lot to get a lot of minutes this season. Yes, sir. So as a season, like looking back at the season as a whole, how would you say it went? Like do you think it went well? Do you think it went poorly? Yeah, so no, uh my first season in the books, man, it was it's a season I'll never forget, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Of course, you know, I had a couple of highlights, like my under-19 call-up was, was probably maybe one of my highlights, but I would also say my first Bundesliga goal, right? That was, that, that felt really special mm -hmm. towards me. And I, I was uh, fortunate enough to have my family, like, watching the game at the time that when mm -hmm. I scored my first goal, too. So it was a really special moment for me. But also as a team, like... Uh, uh, we set a goal before we went into the season, into preseason, because I signed late in the preseason, and uh, we mm -hmm. we all met it. We all met in a room 
and we all we all said to each other that we have one goal and it's to finish inside the top four and compete to try to go to the Bundesliga playoffs. And yeah. we were able to complete our goal to mm -hmm. finish in the top four, but we needed to finish into either the first or the second spot to go to the playoff for the Poco. Mm -hmm. So um, do you have any plans for next season? Yeah, so uh, no, I'm going to be playing with the uh, under 19s. So it's going to be the 05, 04 mixed uh, league mm -hmm. in the Bundesliga. And uh, my, my plans are pretty much to go into the season with a strong, uh, strong minded like I was this year. But even more, set, a, set new bars, new levels, uh, new challenges for myself to try to mm -hmm. accomplish. Right. And mm -hmm. um, like whenever I go into a season, even when I was here playing in Canada, I always told myself uh, to aim, aim high. So set how many goals I want to have in a season or how many assists or where mm -hmm. I want to finish with my team or say if I say if I'm not struggling maybe on a certain something but I don't like how, I, how I'm doing in that certain part of my game mm -hmm. I try I try to train it a lot to improve that aspect of my mm -hmm. game mm -hmm. are the divisions like based on your area yeah so right now because of COVID they they kind of like split it up to four mm -hmm. four divisions so we have our north our south our east and mm -hmm. our west did you get to play any of the other Canadian boys like Crad or Pellegrino? Oh, right now, no? right, right now I wasn't able to, but my under-19 team, uh, when we finished our last camp, we played uh, Gabe's team in a friendly. We are, okay. Me and Gabe are, are pretty close, like we're pretty yeah. tight. So mm -hmm. and we were coming home like as soon as they played. Like the day we came home is when they played and my yeah. side was able to get the edge 5-3 uh, okay. in, a, in a friendly match. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, but we we're unlucky. We we're unlucky. We couldn't play each other. But me and him always joke with each other, you know, like say, ah, it would be good. But maybe this season, you know, we can get another friendly yeah. match with me and him there. Hopefully. So do you want to jump into the national team, James? Yeah. yeah. So now the national team, how did you get in contact with Canada? Did they reach out to you? Did you reach out to, reach out to them? How did that work? How did yeah, so, so no. So just from being in the Ontario provincial program is kind of where it all started. Right. Uh, okay. The under, the under 15 coach. And the last time when the under 17s went into uh, uh, CONCAF uh, qualifications, uh, Eric, the co coach, Eric from the Canada soccer, he, he got in contact with me from the provincial program. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I was kind of the star boy of the provincial team, you know, like uh, yeah. I, I was setting up a lot of assists. So he came to watch yeah. a couple of games and just from mm -hmm. there, he, he talked with me after the game and he set up a couple meetings, you know, and then just through the following year after the last provincials, uh, he, mm -hmm. he wanted to see me again. And we just always kept in contact. And uh, then that's where I met uh, Andrew Oliveri, you know, mm -hmm. a very nice gentleman. Now, now my coach for the under 20s and as yeah. well as Mauro, you know, I, I've gotten to spoke with both before they actually mm -hmm. got to coach me in a match. And uh, yeah. just through Eric, he was kind of the... Mm -hmm. The communication standpoint, right? So mm -hmm. Eric kind of how do you pronounce it? Yeah, yeah. So Eric, Eric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he kind of he kind of set everything up, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, like me and him, we still talk. We still talk to this day. He congratulated mm -hmm. me on my goal, and uh, you know, I, I have a really good re relationship with him, and as well as Mauro and with Andrew. So just just from the That's provincial right. program is where uh, where mm -hmm. everything kind of started from there. So you were in the camp uh, this April. How was the camp and how did the games go? Yeah, so no, uh, man, the camp is something I'll never forget. Like that, that those were probably some of the most fun times I've yeah. had in like a while. Like Amazing. just the boys, the staff, just everyone yeah. a part of that project as a whole mm -hmm. was just nothing but the best. And like the vibe, the vibes, everyone there was just mm -hmm. so much full of energy. And mm -hmm. it was really easy as a player, like coming from, from far, you know, tired, traveling, uh, and then just going directly mm -hmm. into camp. Uh, it was it was really good. You know, they mm -hmm. they settled us in very well, and you know they were very welcoming, even to the new players. Like, because you know you have like some guys like uh, Cameron, Javi Bola, who was there, Mac, mm -hmm. Tavolo, like guys who have been on the team before and have been mm -hmm. coached by those guys in person, yeah. right? So even those guys as veterans, you know, they welcomed all the young lads in well, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I, I'm, I'll be grateful for that experience they gave me, like really much. And for the games, you know, the first game. Game as well like uh as you may know we, we were yeah. able to uh, come victorious as uh, as a whole uh three nothing victory and uh, mm -hmm. i was able to score my first goal for the red right yes, so uh, 
it, it, it was a uh, it was a really good moment for me. Like uh, I saw a run through, and like uh, Gabe had the ball, and he played Shion, and then I made a run through, and Shion slipped me over top, but then just on a half volley, I was yeah. able to sneak it under the goalkeeper. Well, volley too, eh? Yeah. No, it, it, it was a really good moment for me. Yeah. But the match as a whole, like uh, everyone was firing on all cylinders, you know, bringing so much energy as a team. And yeah. I think the first game, Costa Rica just couldn't handle it, right? Yeah. The, the second game, you know, we fell short. But mm -hmm. uh, in my in my truly opinion, and I'm sure if you talk to any of the other boys, they'll tell you the same. Mm -hmm. uh, like Costa Rica, of course, scored the goal, but. I think we should have beat them that game. We had yeah. a lot more chances, including myself. I, I had a good chance in the first five minutes, but yeah. the keeper got the best of me in the situation, mm -hmm. right? But uh, yeah. no, even in that game, we played football. Like uh, Maro, mm -hmm. Maro set a goal for herself as well as everyone on the staff and as well mm -hmm. as the players, we set goals for our, our, ourselves as well. And that was the show that we can play international teams and play yeah, for the sure. best and show what Canada is truly made of, right? Yeah. And we were we were able to do that. We showed them that we can comp we can compete as a, as a mm -hmm. country, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you could say this, but what kind of system were you guys playing? I don't know if you're allowed to give that information. Yeah, stuff, but... no, no. Like I won't go into too much like tactical system, but yeah. I'll, like, you know, like uh, Maro, he he's a very good coach. Him and Andrew, you know, they know their stuff, and uh, mm -hmm. like even in, even in the trainings, like they would just tell the boys, you know, like everyone's here on this team for a reason like uh mm -hmm. everyone brings that that little special something of their own aspect in their game and we all put it together and uh mm -hmm. that's what makes us uh, as a good team a good yeah. unit uh, a good all as one whole right yes, so uh yeah. like just i'll tell you the three main aspects as like words right so communication yeah. uh loyalty mm -hmm. and we, all, we have a big one we call brotherhood right brotherhood, so yeah. uh just that one alone, you have you have to fight for the guy next to you on the field, mm -hmm. and I think everyone got that message really fast, and it was yeah. it was easy. Everyone everyone at the camp took to, like fast, like you know we had like yeah. our little FIFA tournaments as well, like when we okay. weren't on the, on the pitch and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was good. It was really yeah. good. Who's the best FIFA player? Oh, the, the winner you of the know, tournament was the all right, but we had we had okay. two we had two divisions. Two we, divisions? Had the, okay. we had the UCL and the and the um, Europa League, right? So it was uh, okay. Matteo Bunbury and uh, Lowell Bunbury. Wright in the finals. So they were the both okay. winners of UCL and Europa League. And then they played each other, and Lowell was able to get the bust of Matteo. Okay. That's the Matteo. I don't know, all right. So is there anyone that you didn't know before the camp? Yeah, like, yeah. Did, so there was a know, couple. Did you know? Yeah, so guys I was, I was close with, or like I knew before the camp going in, so was one like i could say i said before was gabe you know just playing in germany and you know just seeing each other playing against each other when he was at tfc just knowing and just knowing him through there as well as, mm -hmm. as well as adiza you know like we weren't the tightest but now now we're we're really good and mm -hmm. uh as well as the wall being in the provincial program i i met him there like i was a youngster at the time but you know me yeah. and him still talked back then mm -hmm. but Pretty much majority of the guys, like I was able to get to know, like knew, like from my my first time being there, it was my first uh, encountering with a lot of the guys there, and mm -hmm. you know, like a lot of the older guys, like I named before, like Cameron, Matt, mm -hmm. and then you have like guys like Jay, Mateo, like a lot of those mm -hmm. guys, right? I got mm -hmm. to meet for the first time, like yeah. from being them being from like majority of the guys that are not mm -hmm. from like the toronto the greater toronto area like are the guys yeah. like i knew i knew or heard of before the guys mm -hmm. outside were guys i was able mm -hmm. to meet for the first time mm -hmm. Check. so um in regards to the u20 championship i know it's a little tricky for you to comment on but um mm -hmm. do you know when the team will be decided uh the team they said around a little bit around like in the next Mm -hmm. week or two maybe three i'm not so sure mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. uh I, that's what i that's what i'm thinking yeah. right like i haven't got any emails or confirmation mm -hmm. if i've been selected or anything but mm -hmm. you know i i think that, that's what i'm what's what i'm thinking. would you be available if they if they called you oh yeah for sure yeah. especially being back home like now mm -hmm. and uh, my my team's preseason doesn't start until uh, later june so i, I would be mm -hmm. i would be available for them to call me Mm -hmm. and so you know, be a camp before i'd assume so like usually mm -hmm. 
usually like what a lot of the older guys would tell me like at the at the camp before usually if mm -hmm. we go into a tournament like that they usually have like a little gathering to get us all together somewhere mm -hmm. but uh, i'm not sure i'm not sure okay um okay so oh, we thought you were gonna go oh yeah it's this okay 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 so i just this came up in our research so i just wanted to pull this out here real quick this okay. photo we could cut this bit out if you want but we found it pretty funny <laughs> Yeah. Um, let me see if I can find it. Or this photo. I thought was... you had it ready. I I thought I had it ready. Okay. I don't, we've... Ah. <laughs> there is... Yeah. No. No. As a as a young as a, yeah as a as a young kid coming up, you know, got a lot mm -hmm. of got a lot of funny moments, right? And you know, just some friends bantering with me, you know. At, at that mm -hmm. time, I was. Uh, uh, that's when I was maybe like eight years old, and you know, eight as an eight year old, old, as an eight year old on yeah. Twitter, man, we don't know what to mm -hmm. do on there, right? Exactly. So, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, one quick question before we leave, or maybe we yeah. might have a few other ones. How is yeah, German? For sure. My German's actually actually been picking up. Like uh, okay. the club, the club Wolfsburg provides uh, German lessons for me. Mm -hmm. So two to three times a week, I'm with uh, my German teacher Lisa for at least one to one and a half hours mm -hmm. so uh, i've been picking it up fast like i'm the my tr trainer he doesn't need to say anything to me and like uh english i'm able to understand like his german perfectly clear but like maybe if i like don't get a little gist like he'll tell me in english mm -hmm. like yeah he'll say it's no problem but mm -hmm. for the main part like I i'm good with the german right now and your portuguese you're probably fluent as well my Portuguese oh, my actually, name. actually, you'd be surprised. Like I'm able to speak it, but not, not so fluently. Yeah. Just growing, growing yeah. up, my, my parents, okay. uh, they, they taught oh, me God. mainly to speak in yeah. English, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm able to speak in Portuguese, like in mm -hmm. Portuguese. Like when I go to Portugal, like yeah. on vacation, the last time I was there, yeah. I went to go see a couple of family members mm -hmm. I had there, and like stay there for two weeks with my father, mm -hmm. and I, I was fine speaking there, right? Yeah. Are you from the mainland or from the islands? So my father, my father, uh, his parents, like my father's born in, uh, in Montreal, but his parents okay. were born in, um, uh, the islands of Portugal. Astoria, and I, okay, I, right. I want to say, I want to say San Miguel, San Miguel. Miguel. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. my mother, my mother mm -hmm. as well, my mother as well, her, her, she was born in Portugal mm -hmm. with her uh -huh. parents as well in San Miguel as well. Okay. So okay. They, my, my, my father yeah. and mother parents island. knew each other just through the island, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. My grandparents are from there too. Ah, so, shit, sick. Uh, hopefully Canadian soccer fans know you better. Is there anything you want to say or show your socials? Before yeah go. yeah no so my instagram you know you can either leave it below in the in the channel yeah, uh, but yeah. it's uh jesse costa 10 you know yeah and then uh, that's pretty much it for my socials show your twitter you don't use your twitter my twitter my twitter i'm not using so much like i just yeah. have it so when like my club posts like the team pictures or maybe when canada mm -hmm. like the last time they posted yeah. their they, they gave us our pictures they gave us a twitter a yeah. twitter link to use Right. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll link it in the bio. Yeah. yeah perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Jesse. Yeah, yeah no, it's, for watching. It's, my, it's my pleasure, man. It's my pleasure to be on here.